This is Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz on the Central Coast, and we are joined by Pavel Ogren. He is the general manager of the Oceano CSD, also President Mary Lucy with the same CSD. Of course, Oceano in South San Luis Obispo County. And I remember talking with both of you about the Godzilla El Nino that was going to be coming. The most powerful on record is El Nino and El Nono. Mary, Pavel. <laughs> It so far has been. The rainy season's not over yet, and we have rain on the forecast for right. this weekend and the coming week, so uh -huh. hopefully we'll get some results, but uh, certainly not a drought buster. Well, let's talk about this, though, because I remember that there was a lot of concern. There would be a lot of rain in Southern California, not much in Northern California, and if any in Northern California, it was going to be rain and not snow, which would provide a snowpack in the Sierra Nevadas. Boy, what I said was wrong. Well, the snowpack in the Sierra Nevadas has been, you know, substantial. Pretty good. In yeah. fact, the state, you know, uh, determines what they're going to release to right. the state purveyors based on uh -huh. pretty much the snowpack. Right. Yeah, and there's some been some recent decreases because of warm weather in right. February. But I don't think that should be too alarming because that water is running off into the reservoirs. Right. You know, so the reservoirs have been empty. You know, obviously we need more precipitation, whether rain or snow, in the next, you know, March and April. Right. But as I understand it, what essentially happened is there's this huge ridge of high pressure that's kind of hovering over Southern California. So it's pushing this El Nino, which is bonafide, but farther north into Northern California and the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. So the good thing for Oceano is that we're a participant in the state water project. Yeah, explain that, Pablo. And so, like many people in California, our supplies can come from different regions of the mm -hmm. state. Um, and even the state water project recently increased their delivery percentage to 30%. Mm -hmm. um, because of unique circumstances in our county, that means we can get 100% of our state water allocation. Nice. And so for 2016, Oceano is in really good shape. We won't even need 100% of our state water. And we're going to continue to be able to then store um, our local water resources. So in yet another year of drought, Oceano's increasing water and storage. And let's talk about storage, because I know that Oceano is really taking bold steps to most effectively use surface storage. Yeah, we've uh, uh, participated, you know, spearheaded with mm -hmm. Pablo's leadership of changing the use of the reservoir. Explain. Is that we can now store our surplus water, our allocations in that reservoir versus just passing it through. It can be used as a retention basin. So that's where policies, you change those policies and work with your community neighbors and on a regional approach because that truly is a regional. You know, those plants, those processing plants have to keep going and they're gravity fed. Mm -hmm. So if you keep your your allocations in those retention basins now, mm -hmm. it, it helps everybody, it, it truly does. Because as you explained to me, if you, if you use it as a pass-through, the replenishment, or is it the, the actual um, treatment, it can fail, is that right? Yeah, and Pablo could speak to that better. Yeah, um, a little bit specific on what our county has done during uh -huh. this drought is that the local reservoir was, if you didn't use your water in a given year, mm -hmm. then you don't get to carry it over or use it in the subsequent year. Yeah, which is so very frustrating. It's like budgets, you know, you spend yes. every dime so you make sure right. you That's get right. the, as much money as you can next year. And, a, and that was a common practice in California, mm -hmm. definitely through the 1960s, that if you didn't put your water to beneficial use, somebody else should be able to mm -hmm. do so. But um, as time goes by, the need for multi-year water resource planning and multi-year water resource strategies. So the Board of Supervisors for the drought now allows us to store our water if we don't use it so that we can make sure it's available in case the drought continues. Um, one of our goals then is that we make contract changes so we have those storage rights even in post-drought situations. So to better utilize multi-year water resource plans. Let me ask you about storage, because as you know, the voters in 2014 passed Prop 1, yeah. which provided $2.7 billion in storage, surface and groundwater. That's over a year. Have we seen any construction or even plans for construction? Well, so Proposition 1 had a lot of different measures mm -hmm. associated with it, and the state has started to roll out the ground programs mm -hmm. on some of the higher priority, especially drought related and disadvantaged right. community. Um, some of the other programs are going to take a little bit longer and the storage issue is really a long-term water resource issue, mm -hmm. not a drought 
um, it would be nice if we had more water in storage right now. I want to ask you, Mary, if I may, about conservation. Because when we see the beautiful Sierra Nevadas and Shasta with snow-capped mountains, one could be concerned that uh, we will stop conserving. And we know recently that our numbers came out and we've been conserving less and less each month. And so what's happening either in Oceano, San Luis Obispo County, Central Coast, California, what's your sense? Well, I think the people uh, mm -hmm. have taken a certainly uh, a, a proactive approach. You can see that in, in our, particularly in mm -hmm. our neighborhoods, I think we've cut down to about 27% reduction. Fantastic. Yeah, and, and mm -hmm. things are brown right now. They're a little greener because mm -hmm. we have had some rain and Nothing it is wrong with the that. winter. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly, you know. But I think as on an individual approach, but you know, until people really, really get serious about development and truly look at it, we're not gonna be able to uh, conserve on an on a base on a broad enough basis where it makes a difference. When you say develop meaning future development? Yeah, future development. What's in the pipeline? What what are we looking at? I mean but California is only growing more and more and more and more. And you have a cross current of a need for more housing in California. We just are not satisfying the need. We have a dearth of housing, both market rate, affordable, and even for the homeless. And so, but as I understand it, in North County, I think in Cambria, you can't even get a permit for a home because yeah. you, know, you can't get a water permit. Is that correct? And that's been like that for almost 20 years right. now. Yeah. So is that wise in your mind to prevent? Well, I don't I'm, think they had any choice. Right. You can't, you can't, you can't have get water, somebody right. build a home without and, providing and, services. Right. And Cambria is such an isolated community that some of the regional approaches just you can't reach pipelines that far. So l let's argue, just for the purposes of our conversation, that we don't get as much rain as we had hoped through this season. I mean, anything could happen through the end of the spring, but it's not looking so positive. Where do we go from here? Well, where do we go from here? I mean, mm -hmm. I think the regional approach is the only way you can go from here, you know, mm -hmm. unless you collectively. What does that mean? Well, it means that you, you, you start looking at things in across boundaries. Mm -hmm. You started including multiple communities, mm -hmm. you know, and, and go from there. And, and we do have some projects in the pipeline. And, and so on just last Tuesday, a week ago mm -hmm. last Tuesday, the County Board of Supervisors held a study session for South County, including mm -hmm. Oceano, on what are the options for an extended drought. And, and some of those are exchanges of water supplies between agencies who have a better portfolio to help out those who don't have the It's interesting. I know in North County, for example, Atascadero is swimming in water. In water yes. And the pa uh, Paso Robles Basin is in serious shape. Yeah. And so neighboring communities can have very much different water supply mm -hmm. situations. Since the last drought, our county has done a really good job of developing regional infrastructure. And we can do exchanges of water supplies in North County to help out South County if needed. Um, they're complicated, but those discussions are already um, occurring because in 2016, our communities are still okay. But if this drought continues into, you know, a sixth year or more, then those complicated exchanges are necessary. But we think about San Luis Obispo County is generally okay, but what about our friends just to the north in Fresno County or in Kings County? I mean... They are in a serious and, state of hurt. And a lot of that, again, those agricultural impacts mm -hmm. even in those counties are significant because um, communities and our urban uses are still a relatively small percentage of right. California's overall. That's a whole other conversation yeah. about, you know, who's conserving? Governor Brown right. called for a 25% reduction, but he was focused on right. urban residential users, not ag users. And so it became quite contentious. And the urban area's ability to weather the storm mm -hmm. um, is better. I'm really concerned about what are the impacts to agriculture because it is a, an important part of our So when you come back economy. next, let's talk about that because San Luis Obispo does have plenty of ag. Oh, yeah. Yes. Grapes and otherwise. Her name is Mary Lucy. She's the president of the Oceano CSD. He's Pavo Ogren. He's the general manager of the Oceano CSD. My name is Brad Pomerantz from the Central Coast. It's Charter Local Edition.